Hello and welcome to your introduction to visual programming with Dynamo and Revit. My name is Kevin Grenling. I'll be the author for this course. Module 1 is entitled, What is Dynamo? Throughout this course, we are going to pursue ways to define visual programming and what it means for us, the average Revit user. We will also get a thorough understanding of the Dynamo user interface, hopefully to a point where we can use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Additionally, we'll learn to differentiate between static and parametric features in both Revit and Dynamo. If we peek behind the curtain of the software that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really just a couple of lines of code that are continually executing uh, the commands that we give it. Those commands are realized through a graphics processor, which shows us the imagery that we work with every day. Now, the very useful thing that Dynamo does for us is it gives us a way to transition the code that's operating behind the curtain into a visual display that we can wire together in clever ways and formats to create algorithms. These algorithms are further used to develop geometry. Dynamo then takes our algorithmic relationships, our modification to the code, and feeds it back into the program itself, which generates, of course, the project that we've designed. In case you might be wondering, visual programming really isn't just limited to Revit with Dynamo. There are examples of visual programming in almost every software that we use nowadays. One of the uh, first primary examples of visual programming was Excel. Excel basically is a grouping of rows and columns with data. That data is wrapped together into different formulaic relationships, which is essentially just another way for displaying algorithms. For us in the architecture and design industry, there are a few different programs that we use typically. In, in modeling, we use Rhino, we use Revit, uh, SketchUp, 3D Max. Uh, all of these programs in one way or another have some kind of visual programming component. In video games, we have Unity. The way that we map relationships and actions and all of the playable features of a video game is actually done with visual programming like you see here. In Grasshopper, which is more of a, a conceptual design modeler, Grasshopper is for Rhino and it generates geometry and then pushes that geometry back out into Rhino. For us, when we're using Dynamo, Dynamo will actually generate different geometry, the relationships of how we're tying geometry to one another, where we can modify parameters, and a number of different things that we'll explore in this course. So that said, let's look at what it takes to really operate Dynamo. I have two primary pieces of advice for those of us who are the average Revit user, not necessarily having any experience with computer programming languages or anything like that. The first is begin with the end in mind. Have a little bit of a conversation with yourself or your coworkers about what the product is that you're trying to create. It'll help you identify the various components and tools that you'll need in order to generate that form. Secondly, experience is certainly paramount to creativity. This is not the kind of program that one can pick up and begin using after maybe an hour or so of playing around on a couple of YouTube channels. It's an extremely powerful software, which means creativity can really be amplified by the power that it provides. However, without knowing the underlying structure of how information is passed through and processed and geometry gets changed and families are assigned, we can't really take advantage of Dynamo in its purest form. Some notes about this course. This course is a beginner level course. We're going to review a little bit about Revit, the functions in Revit that are parametric, how we can translate those into Dynamo to be even more powerful parametric relationships, or in this case, algorithmic relationships. 
the first part of this course is going to contain a lot of data centric design. And by that, I mean, we're going to look at how information actually flows through the program in order to create geometry. Uh, at the base level of things, we're going to start off with points and lines or curves and creating some plane relationships within that. Also, something to note is the geometry that we're creating for this course is heavily simplified. In order to understand the software and move on to a more advanced level, you truly have to have a firm uh, working understanding of how data flows. And so we're not going to worry necessarily about the details of hardware or any of the special system families that we would need in order to create full construction documents with this geometry. And for those of you who are Revit users, you're familiar with the visibility settings and in terms of the level of detail for each of the views, you can think of this course as a, a course detail exploration. So we're going to look at everything on a general level and we're not going to get bogged down in specifics at the higher degree of design.